The Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy is, how can I put this? Unforgiving. Oh, no! Unforgettable. Oh. In the wall. Unpredictable. Stop it in the wall. And if you're a trackside camera, very, very dangerous. This championship has brought together some of the quickest drivers from around the world and placed them in the, the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy race car. And as it travels to some of the most iconic street circuits, Riyadh, Mexico, China, Hong Kong, Rome, Paris, Monaco. With only three races left, our challengers will face a New York City double-header showdown on the final weekend. But first, we've arrived in Germany at the Tempelhof Airport, circuit that's steeped in history. But today, we introduce the future. Hello everyone, welcome to Berlin's Tempelhof Airport here, just south of the centre of the wonderful capital city that is Berlin. It's round eight of the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy competition. Amanda, we have got a fantastic race ahead of us, haven't we? <laughs> we have indeed. This series is absolutely unique. It is, of course, the first series for battery electric vehicles um, and also the first official support series for Formula E. So these are production-based cars uh, based on Jaguar's award-winning I pace road car. Let um, me stop you there. Okay. How many awards has it won, Amanda? Because this car is phenomenal. It's it is. It is. It's been incredible, actually. I think from the last count, it was about 50. European uh, car of the, of the year, year, world, world car, car of the year, green, green car. car of the year, yeah. best car on four wheels with a steering <laughs> wheel. It's won the lot. This car really is groundbreaking, and we're going to put them around a the track. Exactly. But these are significantly are actually very closely based on that road car. Obviously, they've had developments made to them for racing, but these are basically. Uh, production-based race cars, which means that what we're looking at here is very much driver skill. So the drivers are, are just, you know, it's we've seen so far the, the series so far. It's been incredibly so close, competitive. and we've got two categories of races. So we've got pros and we've got pro ams. Now the difference in them is that everybody needs an international C race license, but the pros have one more. Uh, they have gold standard licenses. Uh, or Yep, and then the Pro-Ams have got bronze. So the FIA will actually decide at the end of each season and award you an upgrade on your licence, uh, depending on your experience and your... Um, uh, race wins. Now, the championship so far is really tight at the top. There are two main contenders. That's right. Brian Sellers, the American, and one of the Brazilian drivers, Sergio, Sergio Jimenez. Exactly. Huge competition coming now, our way. These two, I think... At the beginning, I'm not sure that we really knew who we was going to come out. Expect, really, no, didn't we? we didn't know who was going to come out on top because actually the calibre of the pros is incredible. We've got some amazing talent out there. But what we've seen is it's all about consistency. So, yes, you're right. The battle between these two is very, very tight. We've got one point separating them at the moment. Brian is just that one point further ahead, but there's only 63 points left for the rest of this series because, of course, we've got this race here and then we've got a double header in New York. Yeah, because we don't go to Bern, we skip Bern uh, and then we have, like you said, a double header in New York, which means that this race really could be a championship decider. So before we talk about the future, let's take a look at our season so far in the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy. The Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy Championship has electrified seven iconic cities on three continents. The first ever Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy Series race is go! The Pro-Am class has been dominated by the Saudi racing driver Banda al Asai, storming to a 36-point lead. There to win Pro-Am is Banda al Asai. And until Paris, there have been five different Pro winners at five races. Victory for Catherine Legg. Sergio Jimenez to take his first win in the Jaguar I-Pace e Trophy. But through the rain and carnage on the French capital emerged one victor, American sports car veteran Brian Sellers. He broke the deadlock to become the first double winner in this exciting new championship. You're competing against big names, Sergio Jimenez, Caca Bueno, Catherine Legg, the list goes on. You have to defend, you have to be prepared. The latest championship battle played out on the streets of Monaco. Four five lights are on, and we go green in Monaco. An aggressive start from Stefan Radzitski brought out a red flag. Leg is in the wall, leg spun around, legs out of the race. Just got hit, and it was a hard hit as well. It was the Brazilian Caca Bueno who took his second race victory, adding this historic trophy to his collection. Caca Bueno is going to be a winner for the second time in Monaco. Monaco is a special place to race, you know, and win the race. Oh, so. 
I'm, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. But it's his teammate Sergio Jimenez and Brian Sellers sitting at the top of the table, separated by just one point. The Pro Am Championship is led by Banda Alasai, 36 points clear of his nearest rival, Yaki Zhang. Can anybody catch the Saudi driver? Yes, can anyone catch the Saudi driver? Indeed. Uh, the grid is filling up. The representatives of the sponsors and friends and family are all taking uh, to the grid here at the amazing Berlin Tempelhof airfield, uh, which played host earlier on to the Formula E race. And everyone's talking about this surface, Amanda. Everyone's talking about the track. Yeah, it's a really tricky surface, this, because it's extremely abrasive and very pale as well. So it really doesn't absorb much temperature um, throughout the day. So it's cool and very abrasive, which means Particularly with these cars that are very heavy, traction is always going to be an issue. Temperatures dropped, does that mean anything? Yeah, temperatures dropped as well. It's not going to mean much for the car itself. But again, these cars are slightly less sensitive because, as I say, they are heavier. But yeah, it's going to be different to when they were last out, which was yesterday, of course. Um, and it was much warmer then. So it is going to be rather different for them. Now, we've mentioned uh, the pros. I want to quickly mention the pro-arms. Bandar al running away with it. He is, yep. He's been extremely Nice dominant. one, mate. You're in short. You've ruined it. We're live. Oh, wait, what have you done? Oh, my goodness me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's been uh, he's been very dominant uh, so far this season. Yeah, and I think you've got to say he's definitely been the standout. But we've seen some really strong performances by those pro-ams. And I think we must mention Celia uh, Martin, who this is her first race series. You mustn't forget that. She's very inexperienced. And yet she's really held her own and she's consistently scoring podiums. All right, well, let's take a look at how she did in qualifying, shall we? Oh, we don't have that VT, unfortunately. That one's dropped out. Technical error. Uh, so let's talk about qualifying ourselves, shall right. we? Right, so I think, first of all, we got to mention that Kaka is on pole. Now, Kaka, we've seen throughout the season so far, has been very inconsistent. He's scored more poles than anybody else, but he hasn't managed to actually convert these into race wins. So Kaka is on pole, and he is alongside his teammate, Sergio Jimenez. Now, with Sergio fighting for the battle, for the, the battle of the championship, in. do we think that there's actually going to be a bit of team orders at play here, with Kaka perhaps helping Sergio take these valuable points? Well, we will see, won't we? We'll have to ask him that question uh, when we talk to him a little bit earlier on. All right, but let's take a look at the main story. It's Sellers versus Jimenez. So far this season, the championship lead has changed five times in the last seven races. Now, Simon Evans was the first man to take top spot, and he was followed by Catherine Legg, Brian Sellers and Sergio Jimenez. It's the checker flag and the win for Simon Evans. And victory in the top of the championship for Catherine Legg. Now, one man who has yet to do that is Brazilian Caca Bueno. Has now, Caca Bueno gone straight on at turn one? Now, despite scoring more pole positions than anyone else with three, and alongside Brian Sellers racking up more race wins, bad mistakes in Hong Kong and Paris see him lying in fourth. And finally a win for Bueno in the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy Series. After that first win in Saudi Arabia, Simon Evans has struggled to repeat that winning performance. And along with a string of errors, he now trails the lead by 17 points. So he's going to need something very special from the next three rounds if he wants to carry on fighting for the championship title. I'm not giving up. I want to be in this championship fight right to the end. But we need to take a closer look at the very top of the pro championship because with just three races left, it couldn't be any tighter between two drivers, Brian Sellers and Sergio Jimenez. I'm very consistent. Brian is very consistent. So I think uh, we're going to arrive in uh, New York fighting for the title. Now, Sellers has only failed to reach one podium thanks to his disqualification in Sanya. Now, both have qualified in pole position once, but it's Sellers who has recorded one more race win thanks to him capitalizing in Paris. Now, going into this battle here in Berlin, he leads Jimenez by just one point with three races left to go. Now, on average, they both score 13 points per race. And with a maximum of 63 points on offer over the next three rounds, who is going to take charge of this championship? So welcome to the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy race here from Tempelhof 
in Berlin. Now, I'm joining on the grid the man who's qualified in second position, Brazilian Sergio Jimenez. Now, Sergio, you're starting alongside your teammate here. He's in pole position. But, of course, you're fighting with Brian, who's directly behind you for the championship. So what can we look forward to in this race? I think it will be a fun race. Uh, we are fast. Me and Kaká is faster than any, everyone the weekend. And, uh, of course, my aim is uh, uh, live here with the leader of the championship. That's my aim. But if I have the opportunity, I will attack. Listen, good luck to you. We're looking forward to see what happens. Of course, these guys haven't been out on the track since yesterday. Vernon, you are with Pole Position Man. Kaka Bueno, you're just about to get into the car. Uh, pole Position, you've got a lot of defending to do. Talk us about what you've got to do, in particular, on this track. Uh, I'm defending one match point in the last race. I need to defend now, again, uh, for close to the championship. This track is so tricky. It's uh, concrete, it's have a low, low grip. We slide a little bit more than other, other, than other tracks. It's like a raining day. And because is, it, is it that bad? Yeah, not so bad, but, yeah. but more slippery than usual. And because of that, we need to go a little bit more be careful than, than usual. But uh, the place to be is in pole position. I'm in pole position. I hope so. It's the same end of the Monaco in two weeks ago. All right, good luck, Kaka Bueno. You go and get yourself seated. Amanda, uh, who are you with? Who have you got? Brian Seller starting in fourth. What can you do from back here? Well, it's obviously, uh, it'd be a very difficult race. There's a lot of good cars in front of us, but I think you, you know, kind of try and assess the situation as you go and hopefully move forward. I mean, the goal is always to get on a podium and uh, to keep the championship hopes alive, but for sure it'd be a tough race. Good luck to you. Now let's go join our commentators, Jack and Hopin. Thank you very much, Amanda. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here to Tempelhof Airport, just south of the center of Berlin. There you see the TV tower in Alexanderplatz and uh, the surrounding areas. And there's the TV tower. And here is the racetrack in this uh, fantastic, historic venue at uh, Berlin Tempelhof. And... Uh, the grid is being cleared now because we are ready to go for this next round of the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy season. This the eighth round of the year, and Kaka Bueno is on pole position for Jaguar Brazil Racing. Another front row lockout for the Brazilian duo. It's Sergio Jimenez alongside him in second place, and he's the man one point behind Brian Sellers in terms of the championship. Third is Simon Evans, fourth is Brian Sellers. So he's got quite a bit of work to do if he wants to make ground in this race. Then we've got the 77 car in the hands of Adam Carroll for TWR to cheat up, replacing Stefan Radzinski at the team. Bandar al Asai in uh, the Pro-Am class, starting in sixth place there at the front of that particular class battle ahead of Celia Martin who did a great job. Catherine Legg quite a way down the grid in eighth place after uh, struggling during qualifying. Then we've got Zi Zhang starting in ninth position just ahead of Ahmed Bin Cannon who completes the top ten. The VIP car this weekend uh, being driven by Jens Drahler who is a German journalist and centre the back of the grid is Yachi Zhang after a uh, pit lane infringement, uh, sorry, a technical infringement in qualifying yesterday. So he is sent all the way to the back of the field. So that's how the cars will line up before they get ready to hurtle down towards the long left-hander at turn one, where there'll be quite a lot of battling, I would have thought, into that uh, never-ending first corner. Let's have a look at this 2.375-kilometer Berlin Tempelhof course. And uh, Hope in Tongue, the Jaguar reserve driver and uh, I-Pace expert, is alongside me. And uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a good wide track. We could see plenty yeah. of overtaking. Very wide. Uh, Emily come here to turn six, one of the best overtaking opportunities uh, on the circuit. The fast turn seven, going into flat out turn eight, half in turn nine, and already the last corner. One specific thing about this track is that it actually has a lot of places where you actually break and turn at the same time. So. A bit tricky on breaking several corners. So the car's getting ready to pull forward into their grid position. There you can see the Brazilians at the front. A good qualifying for Simon Evans, how he'd love to get back on the winner's podium, having not been on it since the opening race in Adiria at the start of the season. Two podiums in Sanya and Rome, and then fourth in the last two races. 
So the cars pull forward into their grid slots. Kaka Bueno is the driver who will start on pole position again. He was on pole in Hong Kong. He was on pole in Sanya and he was on pole in Monaco. And he only went on to win two of those in Sanya and Monaco. He's a bit far out of the championship lead, so this man, Brian Sellers, is going to be a, a man to watch. Important start, of course, as always, uh, on the run to the first corner here. Um, these cars, Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy cars, uh, four uh, all-wheel drive cars, um, you can change the distribution, more forward and rearward. So you'll see most drivers for the start will actually choose to go more forward, 50-50 power distribution, and then go more rearward uh, when they approach turn one. So everybody now lining up in their positions. Is anyone going to fancy the outside at turn one? Is anyone going to be feeling brave? There is Jens Thrala, who may be feeling nervous as he gets ready to start his first I-Pace e-trophy race. In a moment, the cars will get the lights and then the race will get underway once everybody is in the appropriate positions. Only two races to go after this one in New York City. And it's going to be fascinating to see what is going to emerge. Here we go then. The Jaguar I-Pace e-trophy in Berlin begins now. Decent start from Kaka Bueno. Adam Carroll gets away quite well and looks to the inside into the first corner. They all pretty much slot in line astern. Round the outside, there goes Sellers. He fancies it. But is he going to get hung out to dry? And then get Adam Carroll, try and get through up the inside. There's a bit of hip and shoulder there. And Simon Evans just about holds on to that spot. We're on board with Sellers, looking back at Adam Carroll in the 77 TWR to Cheetah. Shame for uh, Brian Sellers, he couldn't manage to stick that line around the outside. We saw it earlier today in the Formula E race. Staying around the outside then gives you an advantage for the corner of uh, turn three, which is a right-hander. Um, Maybe just didn't get enough speed through uh, turn one and turn two to make that stick. Celia Martin defending there in the number seven car. She's second in the Pro-Am class at the moment, but she's got the Pro, Catherine Legg, right behind in eighth place. The Pro cars have the blue-colored background on the tower on the left-hand side. The Pro-Am cars, for the less experienced racers, have the white-colored background. Adam Carroll right behind Brian Sellers, and he goes for it. Down into turn nine, crunch. But through he goes, oh, and there's a spin further back. Leg has sent Bandar Alasai spinning. Alasai could have wrapped up the championship today. It's now looking very unlikely that he will do in Pro-Am. So Carroll gets past Sellers with a, with a bold but clean move. I think Catherine Legg's move was less clean. I think that uh, Saudi car's in big trouble. Yeah, it looks like Alasai has got uh, trouble on this uh, right rear wheel there. It looks a bit... Um, Almost looked like Catherine Legg missed her breaking point a bit there, trying to overtake uh, Celia Martin, and then uh, couldn't get stopped in time, uh, taking out Alizai. So Catherine Legg, meanwhile, did get past Celia Martin, and uh, Celia Martin is now leading the Pro-Am class, actually, for the Wiesmann Jaguar e-trophy team Germany, their home race. Nice tire squealing here through turn four. Of course, these uh, cars, all electric, uh, based on the Jaguar I-Pace uh, road car. So, yeah, Leg goes up the inside of Martin. Goes way too deep there and yeah. just takes out Alessai. She wasn't trying to overtake him, was she? You can already see here right rear wheel of Alessai being out of alignment. So that looks bad for him in terms of championship. Yeah, indeed. I'm, uh, yeah, it's afraid to say that Bandar Alasai is out of the race. He's still got a big lead at the top of the championship, uh, but he could have wrapped it up today. Uh, 22 minutes plus one lap to go. Cacabueno leading. Sergio Jimenez seven tenths behind in uh, second place. Then it's Simon Evans in third. 1.2 seconds back to Adam Carroll who's ahead of Brian Sellers. It was a good move from Carroll, wasn't it, to, to get ahead of Sellers? Yeah, it was a bit aggressive. Um, you quite often see that it's hard to overtake with these cars, uh, really outbreaking someone. Brake distances are extremely short, very efficient brakes. Of course, in this race condition, combined with the regen, which is very typical for electric car. Oh, oh Adam Carroll <laughs> gone way too wide. <laughs> what a drift that was from Carroll. I mean, he's lost the place now to, uh, to uh, Brian Sellers, but... 
He went sideways the whole way around that corner. Yeah, you could see then. <laughs> he actually benefited from the fact that the car is all-wheel drive. Stayed on the power, um, counter steer, but at the same time managed to try to keep it going. Here he goes then. Whack out the back end. You can see he actually turns into the corner. When you turn into the corner, power will be distributed to the front wheels, pulls you straight again. So, yeah. But it's a slow, it's a slow uh, racing line for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. Uh, stunt driver in his spare time, Adam Carroll, by the looks of things. So he now drops down. Celia Marta is just in front of Yachi Zhang, who's done a very good job to get up into an eighth position. Three tenths behind Celia Marta and going for it. Not quite. Yachi Zhang started at the back of the field, has made up four places now, and is uh, right behind Celia Marta for the lead in the Pro-Am class. Could have gone for it there, Yachi Zhang. Um, Celia tried to cover off the inside line, but left space. So it's always a bit tempting for a driver if you're behind someone and someone defends, but then still leave the space. It's tempting to still go for that gap. Although the turn nine happen is very tight. So um, even if you make it stick, you'll probably lose out on the exit of the corner again. Into turn one comes Yachi Zhang. Not a t well, it's sort of a tight turn one, isn't it? But it, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, it keeps turning. It's a, it's a bit of difficult braking. So initially, you, you almost brake straight. Uh, the straight here in Berlin, not being a real straight, you always almost keep turning to the left slightly with your steering wheel. Uh, braking hard, all these cars equipped with a uh, race ABS um, made by Bosch. Um, so very efficient braking. And into turn one, uh, you generally see not really what Adam Carroll had just now. Um, the cars will uh, understeer most of it, especially in the second phase of that uh, long turn one two combination. So we have got uh, 19 and a half minutes to go, plus one lap. And we've got Sergio Jimenez running in second place, less than a second behind his uh, teammate. Although Simon Evans is just at the fastest middle sector of anyone. You see Jimenez having a little look up there at the, uh, at the mirror to see where Evans is because he is very much closing in. Leg is getting towards the back of Adam Carroll. Here's the battle for the lead in Pro-Am. Yachi Shank thinking about it, really trying to distract Celia Martin. But it's Martin who has seventh place at the moment ahead of Yachi Shank, and that's for the lead in the Pro-Am class. Hey, Down towards turn one. Jang's got the inside line now, surely. Celia Martin <laughs> covers it off. Very late on the brakes. Well done. Yeah, managed to get it stopped there, and you can see it, the track's very wide um, in many places. So it gives you almost opportunity to uh, force someone else into a mistake. And I think in this Jaguar I-Base E-Trophy Championship, where the lap times, the drivers, the cars are so evenly matched in terms of pace, uh, you really have to try to force the driver in front of you into a mistake, into an error, uh, to get a chance to overtake him or her, of course, in this case. Here they come again. Martin covering the inside into six. Oh, Yachi Zhang's going out wide. Really brushes it. Here are the Pro-Am standings then. Martin four tenths ahead of Zhang with Z Zhang in third. Bing Cannon in fourth and Bandar al Asai out of the race. And uh, Drala is up in front of Bing Cannon at the moment in the VIP car. So this is the continuing battle for the lead. Last lap of the race was the fastest set by Simon Evans in third position, so he's the quickest man on track, but only a tenth quicker than Caco Bueno in front at the moment. From the looks of it, it's really like that the teams of uh, Rail, Latimer, Lennigan Racing, Brian Sellers and Catherine Leck don't really have the pace this weekend. They seem to be struggling a bit with pace here in Berlin. Uh, quite a specific track, uh, a little bit different, I would say, from the ordinary Formula E and also Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy Championship uh, circuit. Um, different type of surface, Concrete rather than tarmac. Um, different thermal behavior as well. Here's a look again at Yachi Zhang getting right up towards the wall. That's nothing. I don't think he touched it, you know. Close, but say. Yeah. Very close. Now here is Adam Carroll in between the two Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan cars. Then it's back to this battle for the lead in Pro-Am. Martin ahead of Zhang. Jens Drale in the uh, Jaguar VIP car. 
I feel a P-car that has actually uh, got a different driver for every round in this championship. Uh, usually a local hero. Uh, we've had uh, Daryl Young in Hong Kong, uh, my WEC teammate David Cheng in uh, Sanya. And here we have uh, Jens Rale. Uh, welcome this journalist, also part-time race driver. Um, works for German publication Automotive and Sport. Um, very well known amongst also racing circles. Now this is getting interesting for the lead. Jimenez and Bueno separated by just four tenths of a second and Jimenez was three tenths quicker on that last lap and uh, Bueno is very determined. He's a very driven driver, takes it very seriously, but he will know he's not in championship contention and that his teammate Sergio Jimenez is, so I'm interested to see how how the Brazil Jaguar racing team are going to play this. How would you play this? Is it a no-brainer to let Jimenez through? Um, well, I think as long as Brian Sellers sits there in fourth place, Jimenez will still score significant points for the championship. Of course, you will shoot yourself if you will lose out uh, later on the last race uh, in, Ber in um, New York after these, this round here in Berlin. Um, but I don't think Jaguar Team Brazil will already start team orders. Actually, on the other hand, it would be interesting to see what they've actually agreed before the race, because yeah. once the cars are going, um, the drivers have only got communication with the race director, so they can't really, they can't oh, talk yeah, with their true. engineers yeah. or anyone else. So it's really up to them uh, from the word go. 15 minutes plus a lap to go. We're on board with Jimenez as he comes out over the start finish line. I think as long as Kaka Bueno manages to keep the gap roughly around this half second, he'll be safe because Jimenez will never try to lunge in a risky move yeah. uh, like we've seen uh, Adam Carroll, for example, doing earlier with uh, Brian Sellers. Uh, your teammate is someone you <laughs> want to hit last of anyone of the on the track, for sure. 14 minutes plus a lap to go. Simon Evans is coming with them. It's good to see Simon Evans having this kind of pace, isn't it? Because he won the first race of the season and since then hasn't quite reached the same heights. So to be running up at the front with quite a big gap, as you were saying, to Sellers, Carroll and Leg, it's, uh, it's going to be good news for Evans here. Yeah, this, uh, this race also got, I would say, oh, it's interesting there. Kakubeno slightly tapping the brake there for a fast turn seven, uh, whilst all the others just lifting from the throttle there. Right? Um, it's, it's an interesting race this here in uh, Berlin, also because it's one of the two races this season where Jagger I basically drove the races after the Formula E race. So Formula E obviously putting down a lot of rubber on the circuit, thus creating a lot more grip on the surface. Um, so as a driver, as an engineer as well, you really need to anticipate on this uh, changing, well, changed grip levels on the circuit. Oh, Yachi Jang sells the dummy, Martin closes the door. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, you can comment on that. <laughs> that was, that was well, interesting to see what the race director will think about that, because um, if you choose your line, you can make one line change. Mm. Um, Yachi Zhang did a smart move there, did the dummy. Uh, Sila moved again. Uh, well, the corner is going left there, so you have to move at some, at some stage, yeah. so it's arguable. Zhang did well not to spin her around, quite frankly. Uh, 12 minutes plus a lap to go into turn four. Here's a look at the replay. So here comes the dummy, and Martin sees it and then just goes for the apex. Yeah, she moves on the braking, which is a very uh, busy, discussed the, topic. And in that motorsport. wasn't the racing line, is yeah, it? That she no. took? So we'll see whether there's any uh, action there. There you can see how the field spread is. Bueno, Jimenez, Evans all together then. Sellers, Carroll, Leg, sort of on their own at the moment. And then Martin and Zhang right together. It's nice to see the top three being uh, so close to each other again. And something actually we've seen this entire season, very, very close racing. Um, cars, of course, identical in basics, uh, based on the award-winning uh, Jaguar I-Pace uh, road car, using, well, essentially same battery, motors, uh, inverter as the road car, but of course, adapted to, um, to racing use. On board with Celia Martin. Looking in their mirrors, left and right. Center mirror. 
Left mirror. <laughs> and Yachi Zhang pulls towards the inside a little. Martin comes across to cover. So it's a uh, it's a good defensive drive so far. Maybe not, you know, uh, clean uh, and, and and a thousand percent fair. That's up to the race director to decide. But she's holding that place. She's, I have to say she drives in a smart way defensive yeah. because as she knows with the speed difference between these cars, you can actually watch your mirrors closely and actually anticipate and react on the car behind you making a move. Um, so that's what you just saw that she was doing as well. She's basically keeping her own line into turn one. And once she saw Yachi Zhang moving, that's when she made the move as well. Yachi Zhang has been given a warning flag. So not sure which, I presume that's the, that's the black and white driving standards warning flag. So that uh, would feel a little harsh on Yachi, but maybe there's uh, something we haven't seen out there on the circuit. 10 minutes plus a lap to go. Here are the top three. Caca Bueno, Sergio Jimenez and Simon Evans all together. Coming down into the hairpin, uh, well, not really hairpin, the 270 degree left-hander at turn one. Last lap, Bueno was quickest, but they, as you can see, they pretty much all did the same lap time. Looks like Bueno's uh, found maybe a little bit more speed. Looks quite comfortable there in the lead, relatively to um, to Jimenez. Martin and Chang once again. Here we go on board with Celia Martin. All this is allowing Zi Zhang to join the fight as well. For Yachi Zhang, it's very important to uh, to pass Celia here uh, for his championship aspirations, of mm. course. Um, still possible to overtake uh, Banda Alessai, especially now with uh, Alessai retiring. Well, yes, that's... Just two, uh, two more rounds to go, of course, but um, the gap is 40 odd points, is it? Yes, yeah. uh, exactly. It is 30... Uh, six points, to be precise. So this will knock that down to just 16 points with two races to go. So uh, the fight would be very much on if Yachi Zhang could win the race. Uh, it would be one more than that, wouldn't it? Because uh, last time he took pole position uh, for the uh, for the Prime class, which he'll get a point for. But Celia Martin looking a bit comfortable at the moment. Here's a slow-mo replay of her coming through the right-hander of five. How close to the wall is she going to get? Oh, the precision is just unbelievable. Does it look impressive to you, Hopin, or, or not really, because this is what you do all the time? This is what you do all the time, and as a driver, you exactly know the width of your car. So, uh, we, we often jokingly say in this Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy Championship, the most huge part of the car is the wing mirror. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're able to drive so closely towards the wall that uh, the wing mirrors often scrape or touch the walls here. Of course, this uh, IPS e Trophy Championship supporting um, Formula E all around the world, um, not going to the next race in Bern, uh, but also then uh, racing always at the same circuits, these uh, non-permanent street circuits, and uh, surrounded by walls. It's very unforgiving. Um, so actually, from that perspective, here in Berlin, it's probably one of the most forgiving circuits, I would say, on the, on the calendar. The rear left of Martin's car, the rear left of the bumper is just coming away a little bit, so maybe there has been a bit of contact out there, either with uh, the car behind, Yaji Zhang, or with the wall. But here comes Zhang, he's super close, he gets so close coming off that hairpin and always goes for a move into turn 10, thinks about the dummy. Can't quite do it. Yeah, he should try to force Celia to defend the inside line more and then try to get a run out of the last corner better than he uh, has done before. Now he's well on the inside. If he can make this stick break later, he will be... He hasn't really got the guts until now, I would yeah. say, to break later. Um, I think the car can do it, the looks of it. Um, just doesn't dare to make it stick. Uh, maybe... Also because of the fact he already had a warning from the race director. Generally, it's if you make contact again, uh, you will be served a penalty. So he'll be extra cautious, uh, I would assume. The two leaders are right together, though, in the pro class as well. 
Caco Bueno is ahead of, that, ahead of that man there, Sergio Jimenez. Onto the brakes. Into the hairpin. As we go, split screen. Looking in this mirror as well, bit, it's incredible. 12 laps raised, almost 13. Top three cars, less than 1.2 seconds separated from each other. Yeah, very close indeed. We're on board with Jimenez then as he chases down race leader Caca Bueno. Here's ah. Yachi Zhang, he's through. Yachi Zhang ahead of Celia Martin then. He's managed to make the move somewhere. Zi Zhang now coming through as well in uh, third place. Maybe into the hairpin. Now Celia needs to try to stay calm. Just, uh, just now, very aggressive on the brakes into turn 10. And from what we've learned this year, being aggressive in this car, uh, especially when it comes to braking, isn't necessarily the fastest. Oh, that's... He's got the guts, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that's the move I would have expected from Yachizang early on. Oh, Celia Martin tries to get the move back and very forcefully knocks Yichang around, goes Bing Cannon. And then reverses into the wall and gets going again. And uh, doesn't lose the place to Jens Thrala, Ben Cannon. So he, he obviously tried to take advantage of all of that and, uh, and got involved in it somehow. So Yachi Zhang there, now leading the Pro-Am class. Ahead of Celia Martin in second place. Here's a look at the replays of it all. Oh, this was the... Oh, it's coming into six. Oh, Martin tried to close the door. And do a little nudge. She was too late there. Yeah, didn't see that one coming. And yeah, that's why I mentioned earlier, she does defend, but oh, then uh, still leaves the space yellow, for yellow. one car. And we've got a full course yellow. If you defend, you should really make sure you leave no space for a car there. Uh, otherwise, especially when it comes to uh, tin top cars, as we call these, uh, you will uh, try to nudge your nose inside there. So here, then she comes back and hip and shoulders and then here, oh. it's probably full course yellow to remove the debris. Yeah, definitely. Circuit. So then, uh, Bing Cannon tried to get back. It's very, it feels very aggressive defensive work. Yeah. Very aggressive driving in general from Celia Martin. So Celia, which, yeah, yeah, Celia probably went back on the power there. Yeah. Tried to stay ahead, but by doing so, the car kind of drifted wide, understeered wide. Um, well, it's almost like, well, I would say racing engine, but it's almost like. Uh, Zhang couldn't really do anything about that. Yeah. This car looks to be drifting yeah, a bit. Yeah, Big Cannon's crabbing, isn't he? Yeah. So I think that'll be race over for Ahmed Big Cannon. Now, when full course yellow ends, Sergio Jimenez is right behind Caca Bueno, and the lights go green now. And Jimenez has got a reasonable run coming down towards turn six. Bueno covers the inside line. And this is the first time that Jimenez has got Bueno offline during the course of this race. Here he comes with the run up into seven. Not really an overtaking opportunity. And Jim oh, Bueno squeezes him towards the wall. That was just about. He wasn't really alongside Jimenez at that point. Here they come into the turn nine hairpin now. Bueno covers the inside. Jimenez sends it out late. Then again tries to get the cut back. They need Bam to play it well now because otherwise Evans will be the laughing third of these three. To turn 10. Again, Jimenez sending it in wide to try and get the run out of the corner. No team orders, that's for sure. As they uh, come down the start, finish straight now. Evans, despite that fighting, hasn't really been able to close in, which has been a bit of a surprise. In fact, made Evans a mistake, was, yeah. Yeah, Evans was slower than the two of them in that final yeah. sector. Two minutes plus a lap to go. Bueno needs to try to extend that gap quickly, quickly enough again, not to uh, give Jimenez a thought of overtaking, because as soon as you start defending, you will lose significant lap time, uh, giving, in this case, Evans the opportunity to uh, close on and make it a three-way fight uh, for the victory. That incident with Zi Zhang and Bing Cannon will be investigated after the race. Bing Cannon is still going round, and I guess even if the car's crabbing, he'll still pick up the points for uh, third place, even if he laps very slowly. He's not actually lapping that slowly, he was only 
about a half a second off in each. It's about a second and a half a lap, so not appalling. He's not really crawling, he's just uh, lapping a bit slowly. On board we go here with Sergio Jimenez, then trying to get the run out of turn nine. Bueno's not been able to get away yet. Did his personal best in sector two, though, so exactly what he needed to do. These uh, I pace e trophy cars uh, equipped with uh, really efficient brakes. Um, so everyone is always braking really uh, late, very short braking distance. So it's actually quite hard to try to launch someone, um, especially without making contact. And I'm pretty certain Gymnas wouldn't try to launch uh, on Bueno. Now close to 2R, coming through the right-hander of five. Bueno ahead of Jimenez. And Simon Evans lying in third place. Now that gap's extended, hasn't it? Quite a lot. It was half a second as they crossed the line and then another couple of tenths in that first sector for uh, Caca Bueno. So this looks as though he's sorting it out. This is going to be the penultimate lap of the race. Missed the apex a bit there, though, in turn six. Lost a bit of time. Through turn seven. Simon Evans seems to be struggling a bit, especially on the higher speed corners. Um, that full Corsello didn't do any favors to the balance of his car from the looks of it. During full Corsello, the tires cool down a lot. Um, so it's all matters and depends on how you anticipate it uh, with your tire pressures. Um, full Corsello then also cools down your tires, drops the tire pressure a bit, and then keep going again. Um, you can see differences in choice that the drivers have made. Jimenez did the fastest middle sector of the race on that last lap, but he's still four tenths behind Cacabueno as they start the final lap of this Berlin E Prix circuit. Bueno has led from the start with Jimenez chasing him. The two almost getting side by side a few laps ago under full course yellow. But really, Jimenez has not got many more overtaking opportunities. Down into six, nine and ten. Moving out of the way there is Zi Zhang. On board with Jimenez, little check of the mirror. Just before braking, you'll check whether the drive behind you is close, if you think he's going to make a move or not, and whether you can break your normal line, or you might have to defend slightly, just to make sure that the drive behind you knows, I've seen you, don't try yeah. to make a move. <laughs> Final lap into nine is the place that Jimenez needs to line him up. He hasn't been able to. Simon Evans is actually pretty close to the back of Jimenez. Coming into the final corner on the circuit, but not close enough. Through the last turn on the Berlin Tempelhof course comes Caca Bueno to win again. The first three-time winner of the season in the Jaguar I Pace E Trophy. But Jimenez in second takes the lead of the championship with just two races to go. Simon Evans completes the podium. Brian Sellers, I think, is going to be... Pretty disappointed to be three seconds off the lead. Here comes Yachi Zhang. No, that is uh, <laughs> the horrible sounding Z Zhang. Here comes Yachi Zhang after a great battle with Celia Martin to take the win in the Pro-Am class. Another podium for Martin. Makes that uh, four podiums in a row and five in her last six races as uh, Z Zhang returns to the pit lane and then we've got Vincana coming across the line and then Jens Trala there in 10th place great effort there for Vincana to uh, yeah. stick on to uh, that third place in Pro-Am class um, with a car that's actually heavily damaged and compromised when it comes to handling so yeah, good job there so there is Caca Bueno I mean crazy isn't it that he's won three times now this season and he's not really in championship contention this will move him above simon evans into third place in the standings but with only two races to go he's he's a bit too far away really As, uh, we see them make their way back around the circuit we've seen a very dominant uh 
Kaka Bueno over the last few races. And mm. actually, um, apart from the first race, he's been pace leading, the pace giving driver yeah. for the field, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if it wasn't for that, the DNF in Paris, I think he'd be uh, he'd be really in championship contention now. But if Stefan Radzinski had won all the races, he'd be in neither of the championship. So ifs don't really matter, do they? Here's a look at the results after round eight of the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. Caca Bueno victorious, half a second ahead of Sergio Jimenez at Jaguar Racing 1-2. Simon Evans in third, fourth for Brian Sellers and fifth for Adam Carroll in his debut race. So that's a good effort there. And uh, Sergio Jimenez and Caca Bueno with the, the second 1-2 of the season for the Jaguar Brazil racing team. It's actually Zhang winning the Pro-Am class. As far as the points are concerned, uh, that victory for, well, the second place for Sergio Jimenez moves him up into the lead of the championship. Six points clear of Brian Sellers with two races to go. Kakapoyna's not too far away, is he? What's that, 16 points off Jimenez's Two wins in a pole. Could him very big favours there. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely an outsider. Simon Evans down to fourth. And the first points on the board for Adam Carroll. In the Pro-Am class, Bandar al Asai now has been closed in by Yati Zhang after uh, his win there. So Yati Zhang gets a little closer. al Asai should still be able to wrap it up. Ahmed bin Kanan in third. Celia Martin with another podium position at finishing in fourth place and closing in on Ahmed bin Kanan. But al Asai still leads. And there are the cars. It's Kaka Bueno having a chat to Sergio Jimenez. Trying to read the body language, are they? I think he was unhappy about that move on the exit of the last corner. Yeah. If Jimenez would have actually, well, maybe he should be almost thankful because if Jimenez would have kept his nose inside, not lifted, it would have probably made Bueno spun into the pit yeah, lane wall. That's true. If you tag someone on the left rear like that, don't leave the space, um, it will make your car uh, well, rotate on the axle. Very quickly indeed. Mm -hmm. So let's go down to Amanda Stratton and Vernon Kay, who are waiting for our winners. Yes, we are indeed. Thank you very much, Jack and Hopin. Oh, what a race. I what tell you what, race. unbelievable. Celia yeah. Martin, first of all, she was defending to the hilt. She was indeed. I mean, she's actually done amazingly well. She's been very consistent and putting up with that pressure consistently um, time and time again was a really remarkable effort. So big well done to Celia for that but i think look here we go here are our winners let's welcome our winner huge here congratulations he is, Kaka bueno. to them cohen kaka congratulations thank you thank you so much very very well done indeed just talk us through it you led from uh, green all the way to the checkered flag how difficult was it yes so difficult jimenez is just much more quicker today than yesterday and after the full course yellows a little bit fight i think two or three turns but uh i put them in my gap and my pace is so so good now I'm, I'm one, the second match point <laughs> against. Uh, I go to New York. It, it's your, it, it, it's your third victory this season. Um, it, I mean, I, I, I don't wish to bring a dampener on things, but if the beginning of your season was as good as the end of the season, you would be in contention with, you know, your teammate Jimenez. Yeah, but it's my fall. Absolute my fall. I make a mistake in Hong Kong. I, I make a big, big mistake in Paris when I run in second. Uh, I'm still, I don't know, 15, 16, 14 points behind the lead. But complete my fall, make four poles, three victories. Uh, I believe I'm in the quickest guy in the championship, but I'm still a little bit far in the uh, fight for the championship. Hope in New York, I keep the pace, two poles, two wins, is that enough? All right, congratulations, Kaka, well done. You go and spray the champagne. Amanda, over to you. Sergio, now listen, before the race, we were wondering whether there was going to be any team orders at play between you and Kaka. But you've just said to me that your aim has been accomplished in that you're now leading the championship. Yeah, well, that was my aim here, right here. Get the leading, go to New York, leading championship. I concluded. So, of course, I try. I have one or two, two times chance to pass over overtaking Kaka. And uh, yeah, I try. He closed the door clearly, normally, clean. It's fighting. I think it's not an order. It's very difficult to overtake with this car. Uh, they need to do something for next year because it's very close. Every car, we need some time, time, time attack or something like that. But anyway, my, my aim was concluded here in this weekend. Now, had you actually talked about overtaking one another in the race at all? 
Uh, no, I mean, we are, I mean, friends out of the track, but there inside we want to win each other. It's normal. I think it's it's uh, healthy. And uh, we, we're doing the right thing to do. And uh, if I had the chance, I try. I, I did. And uh, he closed the door normal and he wants to win too. So that's it. Now, moving ahead to the final, as you say, double header in New York. It's going to be a tough format, isn't it? Two races back to back. But is that going to work in your favor? I think we are very strong. Since we arrive in Europe, we find a good uh, setup on the car. We are dom kind of dominate a little bit in the now. And, uh, well, I need to do what I'm doing. Uh, make points when I, when I can't win. Do po podiums better. And uh, I have to do the same there. So be strong there. I think it's the main there is not touching the wall, nothing, because we have a weekend with two races. It's difficult to set up the car. And uh, when we have some touch in the wall, so we need to be very strong in mind and to bring this title for Brazil. Well, you're certainly the Brazilian dream team. Vernon. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, here with Simon Evans. Simon, good to be back on the podium. Yeah, it's great to be back. I um, haven't been up since Rome, so um, yeah, we're just happy to be uh, have the Gold Track Group Asia uh, New Zealand car back on the podium. Let's talk about how difficult it is to overtake because it's imperative that you qualify well because once you're racing, uh, to capture that pace lap in, lap out is very, very difficult and also the actual physicality of overtaking in these cars. Yeah, just because we're, we're, we're all just pushing the car right to the limit, you know, every braking zone, every turning point, every acceleration is right on the limit, so it's unless someone makes a mistake, you know, it's it's hard to actually get a run on someone. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm actually a lot happier, you know, we, we had a bit of a gap to them in qualifying, the Brazilians, are doing a, a, they've obviously found a switch spot they're almost as passionate about this than the kiwis <laughs> yeah i'm thinking back to my first when i was like that was good but um yeah i stayed with them in the race um yeah i lost a bit of time under full course yellow which i'm not too sure if um if i was too conservative or if yeah or if, if they you know push the rights to the end but i don't think it would have changed the end result either way if i was right behind them under full course yellow but i just really had to be uh take some excess luggage 30 hours back home <laughs> and this uh podium is going to give you obviously a lot of confidence now going into the final double header in New York? Yeah, New York's going to be massive now, you know, obviously um, top four cars can win it. Um, I think obviously probably Sergio's back in the lead now. Kako and I must be fairly even. Um, so roll on New York, she's all going to be on. All right, good luck. Thanks, mate. Well done and congratulations. Another podium uh, for Mr. Evans himself. All right, uh, Amanda, who have you got? Well, I'm now joined by the winners of the Pro-Am category. Yakchi Chang, congratulations to you. And Celia Martin in second. What a race you both had. Yeah, we fight. We fight. I remember we fight in 10 laps. It always was. together. Always I want to attack him, to overtake him, her, sorry. But uh, she always defended super hard to. But uh, I enjoyed it. It's a very good race. Well, listen, I mean, you obviously enjoyed yourself. It was a fantastic race. And congratulations on the Pro Am win. Yeah. But uh, like for me, for the start of the race, before I got the penalty for the qualify and uh, because some problem because of my car, so that is the my qualify time. So I start okay. end of, at the back. But uh, for the that start, I just want to keep in the track and try to overtake someone to move, 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 to push a little bit, a little bit of side by side something. But uh, very lucky, I catch the, her <laughs> in first lap and uh, I try to... I'm very excited at that moment, so I always want to try to attack, attack, attack. Good for you. Well done. Very excited man indeed. <laughs> Celia, was it as exciting from where you were sitting because you were defending hard? Oh, I defend against everybody, I guess. Uh, and that was the toughest race of my life, for sure. But yeah, intense slaps with, uh, with Dennis, that was... Yeah, that was pretty intense for me. That was hard. I tried to keep this first uh, position as long as I can. But I, I, sh I must admit, it got me, it surprised me in the first corner. And like, I know, I can't do anything. Like, so, um, yeah, but what a race. Listen, well done. Another podium for you. Fantastic job. Over to you, Vernon. All right, Amanda. I am with uh, Marion Barnaby, championship manager uh, for the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. This race now sets us up for a fantastic finale in New York. It's going to be incredible. We couldn't have wished for more, you know. We're going to go straight down to the wire, so it's so exciting now. Are you happy with the way that the I-Pace E-Trophy has panned out? Oh, incredibly so. Just to think, a year ago we was here with our first demo run, and now we're racing with the cars. It's great seeing them on track. All right, thank you very much, Marion. 
you go and get yourself a drink. Another awesome race. Well done. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the highlights of this race here in Berlin at the Tempelhof Aerodrome. Everyone is still hanging around. That just goes to show you how important this support series for Formula is really is. Let's take a look at the highlights with Jack. The Berlin round of the Jaguar I-Pace e-trophy got underway. It was a pretty decent start from all of the front runners running line astern into the first corner. It was Caca Bueno who started on pole position and led the way ahead of Jimenez. It was a good effort from Brian Sellers to try and go around the outside at turn one. Worth a shot, didn't work out. He slotted it back into fourth position. Here's a look on board with uh, the second place starting Sergio Jimenez. Bueno got it across well and took the lead. Good move from Adam Carroll. He went up the inside of Sellers, but then Catherine Legg inadvertently hit Van der Alassai and sent Alassai out of the race. And then Adam Carroll lost it. Really cool drift, but it cost him the position to Sellers, and that would be the battle for fourth place over. But Celia Martin and Yachi Zhang would create much entertainment in their battle for the Pro Am class lead while Caca Bueno led away at the front, overall and in pro. Yachi Zhang had a little brush with the wall. Well, not quite a brush, but got as close as he possibly could. As the two... Team Brazil Jaguars continued to fight, always with Simon Evans lurking there in third place. Yachi Zhang went for it, Celia Martin said, no, thank you, and closed the door. But then Zhang got through. Well, she then forced uh, Zhang off there, Zi Zhang, and Zi Zhang went into the side of Ahmed bin Kanin, spinning him around. That brought out full course yellow, and the two Jaguars raced each other towards the front, the Brazilian team. But it was Caca Bueno who came out in front of Sergio Jimenez, and Jimenez now moves to the top of the championship. So here's a look at the driver's standings. Sergio Jimenez in the pro class, six points clear of Brian Sellers with two races to go in New York City in the middle of July. Brian Sellers in second. Caca Bueno up into third, so he's still in contention. Uh, Simon Evans probably still technically in contention as well, but I think realistically, you're looking at a Jimenez versus Sellers battle. Adam Carroll picks up his first points of the season in his first race of the season in uh, sixth place. And going into that final round, the weekend of the 13th of July, it's Bandar Alasai who will lead the Pro-Am class. Ahead of Yachi Zhang in second place. Bandar Alasai could have wrapped it up today, but he got wiped out by Catherine Legg. And as a result, the championship will go down to the wire in New York City in uh, a couple of months' time. So that's how the championships lie going into the final couple of races of the season. Thank you, Jack. Yes, that sets us up for an absolute epic finale weekend in New York on the 13th and 14th of July. Just six points separating Jimenez and Brian Sellers. By the way, Brian Sellers is an American, so he's going to want to perform in front of his home crowd. Do you think he can do it, Amanda? I definitely think he can do it, uh, not least because he's a hugely accomplished driver. He's massively hungry for this. We know that. Uh, but also he's going to have that benefit of a home crowd as well. So I think that's going to play in his favour as well. So it's going to be going right the way to the wire in New York but really I think any of those top four could certainly be in contention almost it would obviously take something very dramatic but they are so close all of them we heard earlier on when I was chatting to Caca Bueno saying that I have the best pace in the race series now uh, I've unlocked something special what do you think it is about his driving in the kind of the four or five previous races the thing with Kaka is he's very very experienced um, he's been racing for many years in Brazilian stock cars and just having that race craft, that experience, the experience to hustle, knowing when to push, knowing how to look Good after point. your tires in yeah. qualifying as well. Particularly, you know, when we, you know, when when they have the the safety car on the track. This is where experience counts for everything, particularly because you've got cars that are so closely matched. It really does come down to those tiny little fractions of margin. And also, his success is really going to push his teammate, mm. Jimenez, who really has the trophy in his sights now. I know, absolutely. It's, it's all to play for. Um, and I think, you know, bad luck to Catherine as well. She definitely seems to be struggling a little bit at the moment. So maybe in New York, 
Yeah, luck will go her way. All right, well, we will find out. Like we said, the season finale is the doubleheader in New York on the 13th and 14th of July. Make sure you join us. We will be there. We cannot wait. Who's going to win? We'll see you then.